Hello everyone, my name is Perlin Lee. I'm an artist and designer. Please settle in and welcome to Film Interactive. Today I want to recap my personal and creative journey and they're quite intertwined throughout my chapters. I have embodied almost different identities or versions of myself. And this is the most recent. I am wearing a 3D printed headdress made of 32 different parts glued together. This is also me, but in AR, in avatar form. This is me in ASCII, at the most basic resolution. I began my career as a designer, then much later became an artist. As a designer, code would fascinate me and inform my work. I want to start off by showing you some past past work from a different, much older version of myself. The work I made during these early years was my foundation. I think there's a beauty in evolving, like a Pokemon. I would graduate from Art Center College of Design and be happy about doing so. Then take a trip to Iceland with my good friend Juliana. This is where my perspective changed. After a dip in the hot springs, we took a camera and imagined her as a Neo-Aphrodite, born from foam, walking onto Earth for the first time. A callback to Eve. I'm now back in my apartment in New York. We decide to show the series to our friends back home inside my apartment. We were scrappy. We had beers, a projector, and our TV in the living room. Along with my good friend Pedro, we decide to do an intimate hangout with buddies, casually putting our work up for our friends to see. The night was filled with thoughtful exchange. Most importantly, there was joy and heart. After that night, there was a sense of wanting to make it in New York as young artists. To our surprise, this series became a part of a show called Woman at News 2 Gallery in LA not long after. And this is my first show. Um, this is where my art practice was born. 
more specifically, my work around identity, my lens as a woman, was born. Early on in my creative practice, I would turn out one project after another. But I never stopped to reconnect with myself, my femaleness, my identity. And I was determined to search for what the female identity meant, what the female experience was. I want to examine identity through weaving my lived experience with the surreal. I want to capture the transient nature of the self through avatar, persona, mythology, and magical realism, just like I had started to in Iceland. I want to create, and maybe even inhabit, a protagonist that portrays a new reality. I want to maintain my cross-disciplinary lens. I want to do all this by still making installations, performances, and code-based media. The medium would still be the same, but the stories I'd tell would be more meaningful. My grandmother is one of nine wives. She's perhaps the last wife alive, but her husband, a rope factory tycoon from the Philippines, purchased only eight graves. He is positioned in the center among his wives, but not next to my grandmother. She was born in 1914 and turned 107 last month. That's two world wars, the Korean War, the Cold War, Vietnam, Mao Zedong, the Tiananmen Square Massacre, the end of apartheid in South Africa, 9-11, and two pandemics. When she was 80 and I was 5, she leapt with incredible athleticism to retrieve my balloon, which had gone stuck on the ceiling. I'm convinced that that moment jump-started my sentience. That same night, I prayed that I would inherit her invincibility. Scrub forward to when I am a teenager, riding shotgun with my older sister, a second mother to me. We regularly surf on the same wavelength, intertwined telepathically. While my mother is away on work, Angel is my guardian. She attends my parent-teacher conferences, piano recitals, and color guard performances. She is the first person I tell when I get my first period. The coming of womanhood is strangely stigmatized by my mother. It would have been shameful to tell her. I keep this news tucked away for a few more months. A few days later, Angel picks me up from school. There is an odd density filling the car, thickening our airwaves. From my vantage point, a jade block of foliage zooms by as we drive by the city's arboretum, masking the Sierra Madre Mountains. Out of the green block emerges a peacock, who decides to leisurely strut onto the road. A normal occurrence in Arcadia. Angel slams the brakes to a screeching halt in the midst of the road. The peacock, emerald feathers in full display, is crossing. We're not blood related, she mutters under her breath. What? I said. To our grandmother, she said. It is now the present day. The connection still feels jarring. By no means was I ready to hear the truth. My grandmother had fostered a community of orphans in Shaman, and my mother was one of them. Revered in her hometown, my grandmother championed the childhoods of children she had nurtured. It was her calling. There is a deeper truth waiting to be unearthed. Obvious questions emerged for me. 
such as who is my real grandmother and where was she this whole time? But a part of me had no genuine interest in subscribing to a service that lights paths through an ancestral chart. There's something cold about the idea of capitalism <laughs> my very personal journey. After all, I yearn for some sort of lineage, connection. I want to be blood tied to her. No, more extremely, I want to know who was the first woman and all the women after her who have nurtured babes in song. What did their spirit sound like? Selfishly, I would hear the woman who shaped my grandmother and I alike. I would understand to new depths what tied us together. Scrub 2 when I create an opera from mitochondrial DNA with biomedical engineer and designer Connie Bakshi. First, we enlist opera singer and music collaborator Emma Goldberg Liu. Not long after, garment designer Ji Wan Choi joins to create a heritage inspired gown. The project comes together. We dub it a genetic opera. Reverb is the name an experiential installation and performance. The piece revisits the origin story of the female identity within all of us. HRV1. No, it is not a virus. But it is the simplest resolution of mitochondrial DNA testing, and it's inherited through the maternal line and passed down virtually unchanged from millennia. I am patient zero. Based on the sequence of nucleotides from mitochondrial DNA, we compose an eight minute song, where then opera singer Emma Liu recounts my soundscape, my personal Eve back to me. We first tested this in an anechoic chamber, Three, one of the quietest chambers in the world. So quiet that I could hear my blood rush through my head. In a strange way, it felt primordial, somatic. My mind connected to my body, my soul entwined with song. I find solace knowing that I wasn't the only one bulldozing emotional monuments to reforge my relationship to my ancestors. I think beyond simply knowing names, there is an urge to build a personal connection to who we come from. So, I want to open up Reverb to those who are curious. Here's my pitch. With your permission, I ask for your cheek to be swabbed. Your swablet is transported to Germany, where a lab specializes in extracting and sequencing your DNA. With the sequence pattern, my team and I compose your opera. By appointment, an opera singer performs it live back to you. If you could hear the song of your mother and all the women who came before her, would you? I long to travel to my childhood home in Arcadia to hear my genetic opera sung to me, the space where my mother's once sang to me. So now I'm going to get out of story time mode and speak a little bit further about my practice, and this will be the last project that I cover. It's called Real Girlfriend. I think it's important before I dive in to say that it's nice to be able to zoom in and out, um, maybe oscillate between what is IRL to URL. While the world is healing, recovering, I am incubating reverb, and so that when the world does open up, many people get to experience it. But to keep myself occupied, Real Girlfriend came about, and Real Girlfriend is a project done in AR, um, with my likeness, so I'm wearing many different faces of female archetypes in the virtual space. 
Cindy Sherman did an incredible job of highlighting those in real life, anywhere from the pregnant woman to Hollywood glam. So Real Girlfriend was inspired by pop culture, um, by gaming culture. Specifically, the very first point of inspiration is Blade Runner 2049, the new Blade, the newer Blade Runner, and where Ana de Armas plays the projected girlfriend, the pocket projector girlfriend of Ryan Gosling's character. And, you know, she is something that's at the ready. Just like your phone, just like your device. And then there's also VR Kanojo, which is a Japanese game in VR that allows you to um, have a Japanese girlfriend. And there's something quite uh, problematic about the space, and it's saturated with many images like this. So what I've decided to do is don various faces of female archetypes, hence me having started a wig collection, and then also going to the writing room and just thinking about all the various inspiration that I've found in the virtual space. You know, I watch Twitch quite a lot, uh, and I am a serious gamer. Um, and just like the idea, when you embody a female avatar um, solely, even if you aren't one of, you know, woman, you just get treated um, in a different way. And I thought, um, there's so many people that are living authentic lives through the virtual space, I think, that I wanted to highlight that. And so going to the writing room was important for me to paint pictures of, I think, either the woman of the future as a frontier of representing what is genuine about the female experience online. So late last year, I was invited by Foundation the NFT platform and marketplace um, to be one of the first 50 artists to be on their platform and it was such a wonderful community to be welcomed into. Foundation is one of the leading platforms in the NFT movement and space. Highly recommend that you check them out if you don't already know them. So I wanted to end on the note that I think the future is a healthy hybridity and oscillation between IRL and URL experiences. Here pictured is a show that I was a part of called Keith Herring to the Screen Generation. It's apparent that we are experiencing a digital renaissance and to be alongside physical paintings, I think is an example of that hybridity. And with that said, thank you so much for tuning in, and have a lovely day.